So uh, good morning and welcome to our dot loop things you don't know that'll make your life easier. And I will start off with is the task lists. So we are on the main pre primary screen of your dot loop. Your profile will be over here. Uh, tip number one outside of tasks would be if you have a North Carolina license, make sure you don't use the same image uh, for your North Carolina profile as you do your Virginia profile. Use two images so you know whether you're in Virginia or North Carolina. All right, on to the tasks. Task lists. So click on the tasks button. And you will have over here different tasks that are assigned to you that are overdue that are completed um, and in all tasks. Clearly, I don't have anything assigned in this account, uh, so there's nothing here, but this would be where your tasks are. I will bring this over here where it says add task. This would be a specific task for a specific item, specific day. This is not a templated task. This is just, hey, I need to make sure I go do this one item for this one day. You can add that task there. If you want to create a task list of things that you do on a repetitive basis, you will come here to the templates tab. So tasks is where you would have tasks that you need to do, pulled all out of all the loops, and this is where this would show up. If you want to create those lists, you come here to templates. So now I'm going to scroll down on the left hand side to tasks. Click on that. And now you have all of your different task lists. So in this case here, I have Tim's sales task list. I have sample task list. I have an ask for referrals task list. I have a listing task list. Then there's a bunch of admin task lists because of uh, admins that need to be doing tasks and roles and items for the loops. So this one, it is Tim sales task list, turn in the EMD, create the website, closing date, put up the lockbox, et cetera. You can come down and you can add a task simply by clicking in and typing in, add the next item. Now, on this side over here, you can then assign it as a due date and a task to be done by a person. So I'll just come up here to this turn in EMD so it just shows the screen a little bit better. And you can come down to assign to, use the drop down, and then any person who is in part of that loop as an overall would be assigned that task. So if you're working as partners, you would be able to assign the task to a partner. If you have uh, admin, you'd be able to assign the task to the admins. You can also choose dates for those things to occur today, tomorrow, this week, next week, or after another task. So if task uh, is dependent upon doing a, a first task or a primary task, a secondary, you can then assign it to happen after that task is completed. So you have the opportunity to really uh, customize this. Now, Regina said she has the Peninsula task list, so if you're in the Peninsula office, you'd have some Peninsula labeled task lists over here. If you want to create your own task list, simply come up here. It doesn't matter which one of these you're in over here on the left. You're just going to come up here to the right. It says task list plus click that, name it. Tim's new task list. Hit enter and there's my new task list and I can add a task and start going that way. Now, if you don't want to start fresh and you have a office task list or a sample task list, you can click on the buttons. You can come over here and you can rename that task list and then change it to your name. So it remembers or not, it's that task list. So I could go, oh, let me change this peninsula task list, turn it into your task list and then rename it and go that way, okay? So you can take those and use those. Questions on those task lists or any of those actions that are associated with task lists? Not seeing any hands raised, not seeing any chats. 
All right, so that's tasks. So taking advantage and using the tasks in the system. OK, I want to show you guys in dot loop how to access your account and check on some of your profile settings. So we'll go up here in the upper right hand corner and you'll hover over your icon and you will go to your account and it will be your name. Click on that or you will click on my account. Since I have so many, I have to click on my account. I'll come down here and now you'll see that this is my main agent profile, my main agent page. I can come here to profiles. Just verify that this is the right one. There it is. And then you make sure you have all of your contact information listed. Broker license number right here. If you want to take that number down, take a screenshot uh, picture with your camera. That is the main brokerage license number that should appear in your sales contract. So if you copy this and then go into your profile, put this number in there, you won't have to type that ever again and it'll be the right brokerage license number. All right, then you have your RAIN. This is your broker agent ID is your RAIN ID. The office ID number is your RAIN office number. We all start 1097 and then you will go from there, whether it's 01, 02, et cetera. And then this is your agent license number. This is the 0225 number. If you have a business entity, it is not the 0226. It is the 0225 number that goes in here. All of you should have an association with the uh, Berkshire Hathaway Town Realty, and then you'll have your office address right there. Under here, you can type in the company name. You can type in your office address and these things will auto fill. Now, this one right here is for those of you that are like, oh my gosh, I get too many emails, too many uh, dot loop emails, and you want to limit those or take some of those out. These notification settings here, these are, I'll show you, let me jump back up and I'm going to jump out. Those settings there are what we're talking about right here. So any of those notifications would show up in this little uh, space here. So let me go back into my profile, my account. Oops. All right, and that's, so these notifications would be that right there. Now these are the email notifications that a document has been shared a document's been signed, your signature is required, compliance review notes received. I would not uncheck this one if you're going to uncheck them because this means admin or your manager has sent you a note and there's something that you need to see. So I would not uncheck that. I would definitely leave that one there. Um, I, I like to know when documents are signed, so I would leave that checked. Some of these other ones, if you don't want to have an email, that's fine. Um, but you can see those and then uncheck those as you want. Always make sure you hit the save button when you're done. These right here, again, notifications within the system, so you're not getting any external notifications, but it's in the system. I would just leave these all so you kind of get those red notifications that something has happened. All right, so that is your main profile. You can also then go under your account settings. Again, this information all filled in. Your title, if you have a nerds number you want to put in, that's fine. You can link it with your Zillow Premier Agent account if you want, and you have all of your different um, addresses and time zones in here as well again. So this is your account and how you can come in to make sure all of that is set up. The reason that you want to set up your account is because this will auto fill a lot of your fields in your documents. So you want to make sure you're putting that in so that auto fills and you're not having to retype a lot of information over and over again. Any questions on your accounts and your profiles? Not seeing any raised hands virtually or in real life or any questions. OK. Next up. All right, next I want to show you how to add people to your loops. First, though, I want to show you where you know who is in your loop 
And my recommendation is if you are dealing with someone who you've worked with in the past, a past client, a past agent, um, not admin, not managers or admin, but past clients, past vendors, past um, anyone that might have shared something in dot loop, come up here to your people button before you go into your loop. So come up to your little people icon, click on your people icon, come over here to your search screen and type in their name. And you will see in here, Vohar, I have somehow Batman Returns. I have G Giraffe, that's my mom, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's my dad, that's my son. So you can see I have utilized this for electronic signatures, for example purposes, for different clients. And if you look here, there's a lot of different email addresses for different people. So this is where some of the issues will arise is if you're typing in, let's just say Tim Vohar, and Tim Vohar has TM Vohar, TMV dot loop plus LH at Gmail, uh, TM Vohar dot hub plus HV at Gmail. This is when your client says, I can see the document, but I can't sign the document. So they can read the email TMV dot loop plus LH at Gmail, but I probably sent it to TMV dot loop at HV. They can see it in the one, but they can't sign because they're not in it. So this is where you want to come in and double check. This is like, um, some of you will know what I'm talking about. Some of you will like, I have no idea what he's talking about, but this is what we would call the Rolodex. So if you know the Rolodex and this is the uh, electronic Rolodex, make sure your Rolodex is up to date on your people and adding people, whether it's a listing agent, a co-broke, whether it's um, uh, a client, a past client, past customer, a, a vendor, make sure you come in here and check this, make sure you have that right. If you don't want that person, you can come over here and delete them. There's no editing, it's just delete. So if you have the wrong email address, click delete, take them out, and then come back and you can add the person in fresh. And when you come in here and add them in fresh, you can type in their name, their email, and then you can select their role. If it's a buying agent, a listing agent, a selling agent, you can add those roles in here uh, to the loop. Questions on this part of the people before I go into the loop section of the people. All right, I don't see any questions, so let's go into a loop. All right, now we're in the loop, and if we're in the loop, we can add a person here as well by simply coming from the people section, go across, click add person, and then I can come in here and I can type in that person's name. And what happens is I start to add people. You will see, because I've used Tim Vohar, these different alliterations will come up. And in that case, if you have somebody in there multiple times, you could be choosing the wrong email address. So again, be very cautious in putting someone in and making sure they un you understand which one you're adding to the loop. All right, next over here on add person, add to my team. This is not for your client. This is not to add an admin. This is not to add your manager. This would be if you are working with another Berkshire Hathaway agent and you want them to have full access to the loop. Never ever, ever add your client or customer to your team. If you add a client or customer to the team, you have now given them uh, insight to whatever you have put on the loop. So if you talk bad about your client on the loop, your client will know you talked bad about them. So never add to the team unless it is a co-broke agent that you're working with with Berkshire Hathaway. Do not add the co-broke from any other firm to your team, simply add that person to whatever role they're playing. If it's listing agent, that's fine. Put that in there. Um, and then if it's the listing agent and you're writing, 
you can add their ID number here, their rain ID, and that would auto fill into any of the places on rain that's needed or necessary. And then you could click add person and that person would then be in loop. All right, any questions on that adding the person uh, when you are in the loop? Right. Not seeing any chat, not seeing any raised hands. So that is adding people to the loops. OK. All right, let's talk about notifications in dot dot loop notifications. Here we go. So up here when you're in your main primary loop screen, you have a notifications button. Mine says 99 plus. We'll see how long it takes to load because this is going to be for everything. And I can see that there was some signatures going on there because it was in my primary account. Now that I've clicked on it, those notifications have been removed. If I come over here to my activity log, here's all the activity that I have done in my loop in the last forever. So if someone says to you, hey, I didn't get that document, you can click on your activity log to see if they opened it. If they opened it in meaning dot loop, you know they got it or they didn't read it is a different story. But this is your activity log and that is uh, right here within this um, notifications. Next, if you're in the loop, you have your two different notifications inside the loop and these are specific to the loop. So the little flag would be any type of notifications that have happened or gone through inside of this loop. Anybody signed, anybody send anything, anything that is an activity or an action. If this little icon here, this little bubble icon is red, that means there is a note that has been sent to you. You can also use this note to send to all the people that have access to this loop. So let's say I wanted to send this to my admin. And so Haley and Kimberly are the admins here in Norfolk. And I want to say, I just testing for dot loop today, Tim. And I hit send. Now you'll see up here that I've sent this note and it's between Haley, Kimberly, and Tim. So there's that new note. And if I wanted to create another new note, and let's just say I wanted to send something to relocation, Candace, Darlene, and Jasmine. I test note from Tim for teaching purposes. And then I hit send. Now you can see I have this other group of notes. So any type there of notes is going to be grouped in here and you can go back to it and click on it. If I wanted to send a note to them again, I could just click on it, type in there and type in my note. And then if they sent any notes back, I'm just going to refresh, see if anybody's responding or paying attention. If they had sent a note back, this would have turned red and I would see that there's a note for me to review. So those are my notifications within the loop. So you have notifications in the loop and you have notifications right here for all of your activity within your whole dot loop account. Any questions on notifications? All right. All right, your history inside of a loop. Let me see if I can find. What do we got here? Oh, that's agents. Let me see if I've got uh, invoices. 
think so. All right, so let me just use the test loop here. So for your history, anytime you have a document in here, you will be able to see what's happened with that document. So I'll click on the document and I'll come here to more and it will say document history. When I click on that button, it will show me that there is one version of this loop. I'm sorry, one version of this document. If we had six, seven, eight, nine, ten versions of the document, those versions would appear for the versions that I edited and created. So I see John Powell, so I'll use John Powell as an example. If John Powell and I were doing a transaction together and I created a document, version one would show up in my document history. Once he received it, if he made any edits, he would see version two in his document and I wouldn't see version two, I would see version three when it came back to me and because I would have made an edit or a change. So anytime someone makes a change or an edit, there's a new version. So you will not necessarily see all the versions. You will see the versions that you edited and created inside of dot loop and the other person would see what versions they have. Now, if it says version, let's pretend this says version 10 instead of version one. Don't click on this document to see version one. What this would do, this document is live. If it said version one and I was looking at it and I was on version 10, this would take me right to version number 10. What you want to do is if you want to see the version one and you're on version 10 is you want to click on view. And when you click on view, that will take you to the version that was there. All right. So you want to make sure you click on that. You don't want to click on that link. The other thing that you can do with that is if you need it for historical purposes and you need to share it with somebody, because if you're viewing it, you're not going to really be able to do anything with it. Go to the document history, go to download, and it will generate a PDF for you. All right, can you all see the PDF? Did that come up? John, can you see the PDF? Yeah. All right, so here is the PDF version of that document. So that's version one, not version 10. And you can see version one if you need to look at that for historical purposes. All right, any questions on? Uh, well, let me show you the next thing about history. The other thing is that's the document history. So if you go up here to the more, you go to document history. You can also see the field history. So I'll click in this one, it says Joe Seller. I've gone in here. Go over here to this little, looks like a backwards arrow at the end. So when I clicked on it, see when I click on this, well, let me get out of this field here and go to one of these. All of them are all editables, let's see, right here. All right, so I'm gonna click on this field. So watch here in the black bar, because now I'm in the document. When I click on this field, there's gonna be a bunch of things that pop up here. Those are your edits. It's gonna be this little thing at the end, the field history. And the same thing with this signature, it's always going to be there, that field history. So when I click on that one, and I click on the field history, now it's going to show me what happened. On June 9th at 958, Tim Vohar added the field. On June 10th, 2022 at 1052, Tim Vohar, field value changed to do Joe Seller, font style was changed, font color was changed. So any activity that was saved will be tracked in the field history. So you can see that from a historical perspective. All right, any questions on history? Any questions on history? All right. I'm going to show you guys now how to split a document inside of a loop. So we're going to go here to our loop, click on our loop. 
and we're going to go ahead and add a document. Let's just say we had an offer come in. So we're going to click on add document. And there's a button right here to add a document or if it's a placeholder right here, see the placeholders as I hover over a placeholder, I can actually click on this to add a file and that will bring up either the computer or a template so I could click on computer and up comes my computer. You probably can't see that because it's not screened, but that would bring up my computer. If I click on add document. I'm going to go here to browse. Now you're not going to see this, so I'm just going to go grab a document. Find something here. Sure, this works. This is a nice document there. Click on open. And you'll see in here this document is uploading. I picked the big one, so it's going to take a second. But I want to be able to show you guys all the process to it. And you can see this is a couple hundred page thing, how quick it's loading in here. So it doesn't take too long if you just have a 10 or 15 page contract. All right, I'm going to click on this document. And now I have my document here. I will come up here to file. Click on split document. And there are 159 pages in here. If I knew that I had seven documents in this 159 pages, I would simply come over here. Click on seven. And now here are my documents, seven documents. I can come here to my file name and I could do purchase agreement. And that's pages one through. 15 and I could do my PICA. Which is 16 through what 19. 18, 16, 17, 18 and et cetera, et cetera. Down the line, click split document. Let's take just a second here. I'll split this document up. Click done. And now up here. It says purchase agreement instead of operations and policy manual. So I've just created my documents here. So that's page one. I'll scroll down to page 15 or so. 13, 14, 15. And you see right here. Number page 15 over here on the right still says PA right here. As I scroll to the next page, it now changes to the PICA, and that's page number one of the PICA. So that's a way to split the documents so you have uh, your different documents ready for review if you have a PDF of everything. Any questions on splitting documents? Questions. All right. All right. Any other questions? And I have one more that Regina asked. So let me get over here. Any questions? No. All right. Last thing I'm going to show you guys is setting up signatures for LLCs. So let's do. I overrun it. I think I overrode it. All right. Oh, here we go. Sorry. All right, I'm going to open this document here. Now, if you open a document and it's not auto filled and you want to auto fill it at that point, you can click on auto fill right here. OK, and you can come in here and select the people you want to put in here and manage. And in this case, we're just going to close it because what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to trick the system. And I want to put in here. Oh, not here. Buyer name. I want to put in, uh, let's say, Tim Bohar. Managing member. OK, so I'm going to put in there. So it's going to put in managing member 
in all the places that the signature has to apply. And so I can come in here. And I can put in let's see, fire. Tim Vohar. Managing. All right, so this will auto fill throughout my contracts so that I have this Tim Vohar managing member appropriately set up. I'm going to come up here, hit save. I'm going to go here to apply signature and I'm going to apply Tim Vohar to sign here. OK, so I got Tim Vohar to sign there. Now I can come up here after I hit save one more time. I take out this Tim Vohar managing member and I'm going to type in, uh, let's say. Um, Tim sells houses to. LLC. OK, so now that I've done that. I come back down here. This says Tim Vohar managing member and it's assigned in the way, shape, form that needs to be done for legal purposes. And then the client doesn't have to do anything but click on the sign now button and that Tim Vohar managing member will pop up. And my my company who's really the company who's selling it is or buying it in this case is now saved so that field will auto populate through all your documents and then you don't have to remind your client or teach your client how to change their signature all right so that is how you set it up for an llc or, or perhaps even a power of attorney um, if you're doing it that way so you can set that up llc s corps power of attorneys different different routes so go in make sure you set up the signature first and then go back and change who the owner is once you've saved the signature blocks. All right, any questions on that? Yes, Tim, just to clarify um, that you don't have to put Tim sells houses to LLC on page three. You just say uh, Tim Vohar managing member. You don't say Tim sells houses to LLC managing member or now the signature is going to be set up as the Tim Vohar managing member because that's who's signing it. So that's what this box is. What's the, the signed field and what matches the signed field? Because it, it it's more for clerical if someone was like just kind of chicken scratch signing so you know who that signature belongs to. OK, thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, so these are my tips and tricks uh, for dot loop. So hopefully you all picked up one or two things uh, again. Uh, give us probably till Wednesday next week because I think I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. So Haley's going to uh, or Haley or Kimberly, probably Haley um, is going to cut these up into eight different pieces. So we'll have those different eight little videos snippets for YouTube so you can just go watch whichever one is relevant and pertinent to the issue you need some help with. I want to thank you all for being here today. Thank you for being here yesterday if you were. Um, come join us in July for our Blitz sessions and uh, have a great weekend. Bye, great. everybody. Bye.